Uh, good day, everyone. Welcome back to Gordy's Gas Bags, episode three, uh, courtesy of my good bottled friend here, the Corona Extra. And um, who else? I, I, I've been dying to have a chat with this lady, only because we go way back and we have some bloody funny stories. And I'm hoping some of those will come to fruition in this chat. But Simone McInnes, welcome. Hello, Hello Gordy. How are you going? I'm good. We do go a long way back, don't we? Because I was thinking about, like, back to, I remember being in the Vic State team and you being in 21s and following me around like a lost puppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had to get your first one in. Have you been prepping this all night? Yeah. No, but we need a long history. We've had lots of laughs and lots of stories. So we looking have. forward to catch up. We don't talk that often, so it's always good to catch up. Well, most times it's me on a microphone commentating and having a bit of a dig it and a laugh at you on the other side of the court stressing yeah. as a coach. Yeah, I know. It is different. <laughs> Who'd have thought? I know. I mean, hey, I'll... listen, many wouldn't yeah. know that you're sort of based down in Geelong, which is how long a drive out of Melbourne? Uh, look, anywhere between an hour and two hours oh. or two and a half hours, depending on traffic. So, but one of the bonuses at the moment is I'm not doing that drive each day. So, um, yeah, it can be an hour, an hour and 15, but with traffic, it can be quite a drive. So I'm enjoying not having to do get in the car and do that each day at the moment. So you, do you drive into Melbourne every, like, are you up in Melbourne every day for Vixens? Pretty much every day. Yeah. So sometimes, but unfortunately, I, I'm up there to be at the VIS and do for their strength and conditioning. And I'm up there to be on court or for any meetings. But other than that, I work from home, so generally I can time the drive out of peak hour, for example. But um, yeah, but to be honest, I've been doing it for 30, 40 years yeah. on and off. So You're used part to and it. Half. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right, let's go way back, Simone. Can All you right. remember where we first met? Like where we first met? Where? Well, I think the. No, one of the earliest memories I can remember is it was obviously Adelaide. a big impact. <laughs> Adelaide at a nationals or something. I remember. Yeah. Why you tell me? Where was it? Okay, so the very the very first time we met was mm -hmm. both you and I were engaged to go and do a sportsman's night in the country, where we had to speak, and you were the special guest, and yes. I was there as a secondary speaker. Do you remember so this? I, I I think I do. Where did we go? I can't exactly remember which country town it was, but we got there and <laughs> I hadn't met you before. And, you know, like I was a big fan of, of your game and thought you were a half decent person until I met you. Um, and, <laughs> and then you were supposed to be the special guest and get up and speak first. And you were like, nah. And you just threw <laughs> me forward. <laughs> yes. <laughs> said, you I get up there and remember. speak first. I can't remember it, but I could imagine my, me going, right, I got it, you're up first, you go, you go. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. And then it wasn't long after that, Simone, that uh, you and I, we, we went, and Pete Kennedy, actually, who, you know, our mate that's passed away, um, we went on the Sun Herald tour and we used to travel with some of the boys from the AFL. That was actually one of my, I do remember that clearly, the Herald Sun tour would be the bike ride around Victoria and every stage finish, they would hold, you know, clinics or um, in all the different sports. So there was footballers, there was us netballers and different sports that would travel around with it. We had a blast. We had a blast. It was we? great. And I remember the very first stop we had, you and I were rooming together and it was the first time that we had hung out and roomed together. And I was, and we were on the, we were going up the balcony of our motel and I was walking <laughs> up the stairs. And you yelled out, my bag. <laughs> would I carry your bag? And then you said, and if there's a queen bed and a single, make sure you remember who your elders are. <laughs> I do remember that, though. That was fun. We had a blast. We had a good time. Yeah, I was looking at Pete Kennedy. I was looking at those photos really fondly. Yeah. But, really and that was just the start of the times that we had. I know. We'll go on about a couple of others later on. Hey, mate, uh, go back to your Aussie days. Shelly yep. O'Donnell I spoke with uh, on episode one of Gordy's Gas Bags and she's, I asked her the question, who was the worst person to room with? And she said, oh, I don't know if there was a worse person, but 
she said, I was scared of rooming with either Vicky Wilson or Simone McInnes. Would you like to respond? Here's your chance. Well, her problem was she probably went for the queen bed instead of the single the first time that we went there. So I had to sort her out. Uh, Shelley and I roomed because we were captain and vice captain with the state team. So we roomed for years. And in fairness, we were opposites really in that I'm up at the crack of dawn and I'm ready to go to breakfast straight away. Shelley could sleep. It would be there snoring for hours on end. Mind you, I'd have to step and climb over all the rubbish, her rubbish all over the room that she spread everywhere to get out the door. So we were quite opposites, but we did, we had great fun rooming together. Yeah. A little bit taken aback that she put me as one of her worst roomies, but I'll get her. Yeah, I know. And what, what about you on tour? Who, who, what were some of the fun things that happened? I mean, it was... The era that you played, oh, it's funny, since I've been doing this Gordy's Gas Bags, a lot of comments have come out about, oh, it's so good to see the old girls, you know, and, oh, like it's nice to be called the old girls now. But, but it was just such a phenomenal era. It was a different era, wasn't it? it there, was a, there was a staunch group of players that played for Australia as just a solid foundation for such a period and you became household names and... and I mean, you know, the Nicole Cusacks, the Sue Kennys, the Vicky Wilsons, the Jenny Borlazers, the Rosie Jenkies, all these players. I mean, what an extraordinary era. It was. I, you know, look back on it now and it was, it was a group. We had a lot of success together. Um, it, was, it was an interesting group because and that's where I always see what makes up a team is that, you know, we weren't necessarily the best of mates or, and we're all very different people well, fiercely competitive and well, open and honest and, you know, you have your argy-bargies and your good times and your bad times, but we had the most amazing experiences together on court. And I think no matter what happened, any time that we stepped on court as a team, no matter what it might have been going off court, when you stepped on court, you know that person beside you had your back and was going to do the job for you no matter what. And, you know, I, I love that. And, you know, that was one of the really good experiences about being part of a really successful team, having that confidence, knowing the person beside is going to give everything they've got to back you and do the job they've got to do out there on court. And you know what? It was super competitive. In my, when I first started with the Australian team, you know, it's 10, 10 players in a team. Mm. And there was still, I think in the early days, there was the restrictions about interchange. So, you know, you had to really earn your spot to get out there and, just, and to be on court as part of the the seven so it was super competitive you know pretty hard assed and driven and tough group to be a part of but heaps of fun one of the things I think that was enjoyable with the Australian team back in our day like the season always finished with the international but it was you could then go off so you'd be overseas somewhere so you could then get right out extend your holiday and you know stay over in Jamaica or wherever it might have been or England and those sort of little opportunities are not there so much at the moment. Um, but, yeah, there were some fantastic times. And I still get to catch up and get together with some. Uh, some there's a handful of us that have started trying to catch up yearly. We call it the old Miles Netball Club. And, <laughs> and each year someone's responsible for hosting. Um, so I had everyone down at um, Fairhaven down along the coast this year. And it's, you know what, we probably just say the same stories and have the yeah. same laugh and all of that. But it's, it's just good fun to catch up and there's so much history um, that goes back and we just want to work hard at staying in touch and, and connecting each year. Yeah, it's so, it's so important, isn't it? Even more so at this particular point in time because Fairhaven, those trips will be a, a few months away for all of us around uh, Australia mm -hmm. at the moment. So, it's, it, yeah, it's exactly. a, a different time. Hey, Moni, you were branded and still to this very day branded, without a doubt, as the best wing defence to have graced the netball court. Um, it's a big... You know, I'll tell you what, this, it's such a big slogan to have on your name. And I'll, I'll tell you why I say this. Because as we know, at community level, everyone seems to think that wing defence mm. is the position that you place the player that has the least amount of skill, right? Mm. For those of us that know the game at the elite level, you get a decent wing defence in your side and it can completely shift your outcome. So for you, you really, like I look back through the year and we've had some Selena Gilson and Peter Scholes. There's been some, you know, Ash Braz in her heyday right now. You know, there's some terrific wing defences. But you paved the way as you made a name for the position champ. Yeah. Thanks, Gordy. Um, <laughs> and, but you know what? 
<laughs> you want me to say? But you know what? You've named a few of them. There's been some fantastic WDs coming through since since then, which has been good to watch. But your best team, your best team, and your most successful teams will have your one of the best swing defenders there out in front. They are super important, if I must say so myself. <laughs> it is. It's, I always say it's where all the hard work's done. Yes. But you know. You're like the shield for the circle defenders and you're so vitally important bringing it back down through to the other end. And um, it is a really an important position. Um, and, you know, I started off in the circle and yeah. playing in the circle in club days with Rose Jenkins keeper and I was um, goal defence and moved across to wing. And people think that it is easy and it, it's... And I, it's like goal attack, wing attack. They are really different and it's different patterns and different small area and different timing and everything. So it does take a bit of an adjustment, but a good wing defence just, um, you know, has that athleticism, that um, agility. Yeah. And yeah. they're invaluable to the, to a best side. We'll have your best wing defence there in a team. Mate, let's, let's go through some of your coaching. So you and I mm. share a common experience together and that was that we both lived in Singapore for a mm. period of time. I think we tag teamed. I was in there for a few years as the national coach of Singapore and then you graced Singapore when the sports school opened up and you were the uh, head coach for the netball specialist program over there. We both have a love of Singapore. I do. I, it was part of my favourite experience was that I was like three, three and a half years that I spent in Singapore and absolutely loved it, absolutely loved it. And it actually started me off in terms of my coaching career. I had taken the position with Singapore, not so much for the coaching, but I wanted to live and work in another country and, and, and to travel. But starting with the sports school and I had a young group of kids, they're like 13, 12, 13, 14. And coaching them at, I absolutely loved it. I had to go right back to the basics and, you know, it was like you had to really remind yourself and think back about the basics, your footwork, mm -hmm. your passing. And I think that's been really critical for me, you know, that process. But one has driven that love for coaching that I didn't know that I necessarily had, but to see the reward from working with kids and seeing them grow and gain confidence and get better, um, and fortunate enough to be able to break up the work by meeting you in Bali a couple of times a year as well. We had some trips up there. So. Well, that, that, that just reminds me. Do you remember the time in Bali <laughs> when we Can tried we, to get you to ride a scooter? Yeah, no. Yeah, I do remember. No, no. You know what? This is where I have a stickler, right? I don't ride motorbikes. I don't might ride a motorbike here. I'm not going to Bali and jumping on a motorbike. One, what about the insurance too? <laughs> That's me. Like, no, nah, nah, I'll walk you. Go ahead. <laughs> well, we, we, did, we did get you on one. I do recall. Yeah, I think it I was, got on the back. Yeah. We, had to, we had to go out at about midnight when there was no cars on the road for you to yes. get a feel for it. But And that was it. It wasn't great, my friend. No. No, <laughs> not my thing, Gordy. Not my thing. <laughs> hey, um, after Singapore, you, you headed to Canberra and head up the uh, the Australian Institute of Sport, which was which was a phenomenal time. And we, we re-met there again as I came in as your assistant coach. But I wanted to actually talk to you about there was a day when I was there and you, you said, Gordy, come into my office. I, I want to ask you a question. Oh, yeah. All right. And I sat down and you said to me, what do you think if I went to Tanzania <laughs> to become their national coach? And I nearly fell off the chair. But I told you, go. I said, yeah, go, go do it. What an experience, yeah. my friend. Oh, it was. And I had the Australian Institute of Sport. My time there was fantastic in terms of my development as a coach and worked with the 21 and under team and went to Cook Islands for the World Youth Cup. But I was at the stage, I'd sort of given everything I could to that program. I was exhausted, worn down. I just needed something new and totally different. And... I got that. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> I was going to say, gee, what, careful what you ask for. Yeah, but it was, it was hard because you've got, you went, I went from somewhere like the AIS with all the resources and the support in the world to go to Tanzania and 
with absolutely nothing, you know, lucky to have a ball there, let alone a court. And, but an amazing, amazing group of girls that I got to work with who just gave everything they could. You know, we had a court with potholes all the way through it and, um, and you know, outside in the heat and everything. And just, and I had to, I had to be adaptable and learn how to do things differently because one, you don't have equipment, two, don't speak the language, although I did learn a bit of Swahili and tried to learn that, um, and, and just trying to um, help them work and, get, and improve. And it was really challenging experience, but I think um, I would love to go back there and do something like that again, really. Yeah. It is. It's, 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 one of the, it's one of the great rewards. It's a different level of uh, pressure, isn't it? I mean, there is a pressure and a stress around it, but it, mm -hmm. it's completely different and it's such a great experience. Well done to you. Hey, um, I have to ask the question that I think mm -hmm. would be burning on everyone's lips at the moment, and that is, are you going to apply for the Australian Diamonds coach position? I know you're going to hate me. I know you're going to hate me for asking, but... I have to ask the question. So Lisa Alexander's reign has come to an end and the position is open and your name has been spruiked, my friend, probably by me. <laughs> I think I've thrown you under the bus a few times. What are you going to do? Well, you know what? I've got time on my hands at the moment with this stay at home, not being able to get to the courts and whatever, so I'll have a good think about it and I'll let you know, Gordy. How about that? <laughs> you are such an ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll take thing. I'll take that as a maybe. I'll take that as a maybe. Uh, uh, hey, listen. Um, how are you? So I've I've asked everyone, and I will ask you. COVID nineteen. Yeah. What do you think? How's how's it coping? What's going to happen? I don't I don't know. But you know what? I'm. I think I've said to you before. I'm somewhat in my element. That social isolation. <laughs> that's my normal. If I'm not at the court or at um, the VIS. Um, but you know what? We've just got to do what we've got to do. And you know, it's working with the girls now with the Vixens girls. We've you know you plan for every and all scenario, and we adapt and adjust to it as we get along. The main thing is that um, you know we want people to be healthy and well and getting things getting back to normal as, as, as soon as possible. But, you know, I'm settling into this new normal and uh, new normal. we'll see how we go. Yeah. Hey, um, I was just sitting here thinking, Norma Plummer once said, I, I, mm. I, we asked her a question, we said, of all the players that you coached, who would be the least likely, in mm. your opinion, Norm, to turn into a coach? And she said in under two seconds response, Simone McKinnis. Yeah, most people, most people did, and you know what? I I would have I would agree. It was never in my picture or never on my agenda, and because as a player, I had fun. I sort of turned up, did what I had to do, and got go out. And, yeah, <laughs> um, but had yeah, yeah, it, unexpected. Not what I had thought would be happening, but I'm loving every minute of it and I feel really fortunate and lucky that I do get to do what I do and to work with the people, amazing athletes and support staff and just the netball community and netball Australia, the netball worldwide. I just think we're a special, special group and I'm privileged to be a part of it. I'm going to take this opportunity, Simone, to uh, make sure that the public out there understand that your surname is McKinnis, oh. not McGuinness. I get so sick and tired. I mean, I'm not you, but I get sick and tired of people when they say, Simone McGuinness, can you just, like, tell people uh, stop it? You know what? I reckon even the other night I was watching Norma, I reckon she said McGuinness. And oh. I was like, Norma, for goodness. <laughs> but it is McKinnis. It's with a K. So it's Simone McKinnis. But I do get McGuinness all the time. Yeah. And... It is annoying, but, you know, I'm sure people put up with that. <laughs> I don't. It really frustrates me. Mind you, I get crapped on all the time as a commentator for getting people's names wrong. So, anyhow, yeah. I certainly don't get yours wrong. I, I make an extra effort. Hey, Mona, um, in the current fabric of Suncorp Super Netball, if there was one player that you could coach that's not currently in the Melbourne Vixens, who would it be? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, you've never thought about that. No, I haven't. 
I know like who I think are amazing players in the Suncor. Um, yeah, I hadn't thought about it from a coach. I coach, I'll coach anyone. <laughs> Surely there's got to be one player you think, oh, God, I'd love to, what an opportunity that would be to, to mould or shape or... You know what? I, I probably tend to see them below Suncor, mm. if you know what I mean. Yep. I'll, I'll see a young talent and I'll think, oh, I can't wait. I'd love to get my hands on yep. that. That's probably when I more so see it than, than players that are currently at that level and competing it's probably more the ones coming through i can yeah i can look at lots of them think them you know like with shelly o'donnell the other night and hannah mundy in the background she's yeah. going to be a ripper and think, yeah. oh, i can't wait to get hands on her sort of yeah. thing so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's an exciting future that kid hey um mona it's been unreal yeah, i mean so. we could go for hours but everyone probably hasn't got I time know. i could go on for a minute now you realize that i can't let you go yeah <laughs> I just saw your eyes roll. Uh, I have seen you do a bit of karaoke. Most likely at the end of 50 beers, but... <laughs> <laughs> Shelley's usually up after one beer. It takes you a few more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you have a go-to? I don't have a go-to. I don't have a go-to. But I'm, I do remember, though... Um, one of the last times that they karaoke was in Singapore. And it was when I started with this, not the one time with you, but there was a, there was a time <laughs> when I first started at the Singapore Sports School. So we had new staff coming in, some from international and majority of them Singapore. And so we we're having a bonding day and we went to a karaoke theatre. And one by one, they all started getting up and singing songs and they were singing it seriously. And I'm sitting there going, oh my God. Oh my God, I'm going to have to get up there and sing. Oh my God, I'm going to have to get up there and sing. Please no, please no, please no. And then it's just like, yep, yeah, one by one, and they're going to have to do it. And so I just up cold, just picked a song that was just there and got up and started singing. And I remember the horrified looks on their faces and sat down, but they never asked me to sing again. But I do remember the song. I don't know why I picked it, but I do remember the song. So I can give you a few. I don't even know if I know the words. I might sing. I'm on the top of the world looking oh, down on creation and the only explanation I can find. I don't know the word. For the love that I found ever since you've been around, your love puts me at the top of the world. Of the Something world. like that. Something the like that. McKinnis. I'll tell you what, this, this will be the biggest hit ever. No one would expect that from you. Like, honestly. <laughs> My apologies if the words are all wrong. It's been a while. <laughs> you are an absolute legend, Mona. Um, all the very best down there in Geelong. Really good to catch up. We should do this more often, COVID or yeah. not. Uh, yeah. But really good. Um, listen, all the best with yeah. Melbourne Vixens. Let's hope that Suncorp Super Netball comes back to the court sooner rather than later because we all desperately want to get back. And number two, if by chance... You are putting your hand in and dipping in for the Aussie job. All the very best for that. I think there'll be a lot of people out there rooting for you. So, Simone McInnes, folks, well done. Thanks, Cody. You champion.